I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA and CSENT 5-minute practice exam on Layer 2 protocols on directly connected serial interfaces. So we're really narrowing the topic for today's video practice exam and some important details that we need to know about for the exam, for lab work, and working with real production networks as well. As always, we're going to go through these five questions pretty quickly, so feel free to pause the video and think about your answer for a moment or two if you need to. And also, as always, we use real Cisco routers and switches as often as possible to illustrate the answers, which we'll definitely be doing here today. So let's dive right into question one. What is the default encapsulation method for a Cisco router serial interface? Not giving you any choices on this one. What's that default method? Move to question two. What command will show you whether a given serial interface is either the DTE or the DCE end of a direct connection such as that. We could look at the cable, but that's not always easy to do, and they're definitely not going to let you take a cable in the exam room, so we better know how to see that. Let's move on to question three. Between those two sides, which side or sides requires the clock rate command? both one or the other or neither. Now let's move to question four. When you run show interface serial, what would you expect to see when there is an encapsulation mismatch between the two routers as it regards to the physical and logical state of the interface? I'm being kind of formal there, the physical and logical state. We'll take a look at that answer here in a moment. Along with the answer to this one, question five, when you resolve a layer two encapsulation mismatch, what else do you have to do to make the line come back up completely? Do you have to do nothing? Do you have to open and shut the interface? Do you have to reload the router? Is there something else you need to do? What do you else do you need to do? All right, let's hop back out to question one, and I'll start bringing a pod up here, and we'll take a look at the answers on real Cisco routers. What's the default encapsulation method for a Cisco router serial interface? And in this particular lab, we have a direct connection between routers one and three, so we'll be going back between those two, and it's on serial one. So I'm going to run show interface serial one here to begin with. And I haven't uh, created or configured anything else, so we see all of the defaults. And the default right here is encapsula encapsulation HDLC. That is the default encapsulation. It's not PPP and it's not frame relay. So let's move on here to question two. What command shows you which end is the DTE end and which, command, which end is the DCE end? And a good command to show you that information is show controller serial and then just put the number after that. Oddly enough you can't always put the number one right there after the word serial in this command. You do need to put a space there. It's more of a real-world thing than anything else. You don't need to worry about all of this yet. Uh, but what we are concerned with right now is this information. So we see that we've got the DCE end of the cable here on router one. So that means the DTE end's got to be on router 3. And also, if you do not have a cable connected here, you'll actually see it say no cable. Now, which end of that do we need to put the clock rate on? Well, let's take a look at the DTE end of the connection. And just to verify here, always trust, but we always verify. You can see the DT end, uh, DTE end of the cable is on router 3. So let's try putting the clock rate command on this side. And we get an error message, and the router is even kind enough to tell us that we can only apply this to DCE ends or DCE interfaces. I would not expect the exam to tell you that. That's why you're there. So let's put that here. And we'll just put 56,000 for quick value. I'll do a quick save. And let's see if anything happens here shortly. Might go over the five minute exam limit today because I wanted to show you this. Yep, line protocol is now up. 
And that's what I meant a moment ago by the logical state of the interface. It's that line protocol. And let's go to question four. You'll see what I'm talking about here. What would you expect to see when there's an encapsulation mismatch between the two routers? Well, right now they're both running HDLC because we left them at the default. And this is what we always want to see. Serial 1 is up, line protocol is up. Serial 1 refers to the physical state of the interface, line protocol to the logical state. So if we see serial 1 is up, that means physically everything's fine. Line protocol is up means that everything logically is fine. We've got the clock rate going on. Now since this is a lab, we'll go ahead and create that encapsulation mismatch and see live what's going to happen. And of course you know your choices here. We're not using all of these yet at the CCNA level, but we're definitely using frame relay, HDLC, and PPP. So I'll set that to PPP and we'll just leave it here for a moment. You can see the line protocol comes down almost immediately. And there's your console message and if you run show int serial 1 that's what you're going to see. Because in this scenario physically everything is fine. You know the cables there, we, we know that, there's nothing wrong with the port, so everything physically is fine but logically when you see line protocol is down that means that logically there's a problem. And that can be one of several things, but this encapsulation mismatch is definitely one of them. And finally, when you resolve it, what else do you have to do to make the line come up? Again, let's find out on the real thing here. We'll go ahead and go back out to serial 1. Use my up arrow to repeat the last couple of commands, and I'll just set it back to HDLC. I could actually put no NCAP PPP here, and it would go back to the default of HDLC but we'll just leave it here and see if it resolves itself here shortly. And very shortly the line protocol comes back up so in this case you don't need to do anything to make that line come back up you just have to wait for the clock rate and excuse me and the protocol of course the line protocol to come back up after we reset the encapsulation. Also of course if the clock rate is missing from the DCE side that line protocol is going to be down as well. So that on real Cisco routers and switches proves all the theory that we've reviewed here today. Hope you enjoyed this five minute practice exam. Make sure to visit my YouTube channel for lots more five minute practice exams, tutorials, and other videos to help you get certified. And also of course the tutorials page out at thebryantadvantage.com. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.